Good evening and welcome to the select board meeting of uh, May 16th, 2018. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.08 p.m. Um, I'll start with opening remarks, announcements, and agenda review. Um, just on the topic of agenda, we may uh, we'll probably take it largely in order. Um, hopefully, Ms. Brewer will join us fairly shortly and, and be able to be a part of some of the uh, latter items on our agenda. Does anyone have any announcements to make or additions to the, to the uh, agenda? Um, actually, let's, um, mm -hmm. is Mr. Malloy here for downtown property working? Oh, he's for mm -hmm. that. Okay. I don't know if he was here for the um, awarding of the mass houses. Okay. So we'll start out with our first uh, action discussion, which is from uh, a recommendation from the downtown parking working group. Um, we've got a, a memo and a map in our in our packet. Um, so boy, would you like to take us through? We have that? to actually convene a hearing for this purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe we'll have to schedule a public hearing for it. Okay. If you're okay with moving yeah, forward. This isn't the hearing. This is the pre to the hearing. Sure. Yeah, Nate Malloy, planner of the town and staff liaison to the downtown park and working group. The, the group's been working, uh, you know, for a while, for almost two years now, and they made recommendations in the fall, and they, you know, are proposing three recommendations now for the select board consideration. And so, right, as Paul had mentioned, if the select board would like to move forward with these, then, you know, there has to be a public hearing, with, you know, two weeks' notice at a later date. The, um, the recommendations are in a priority order, so the first recommendation is to meter the 13 parking spaces um, off Kellogg Street adjacent to the Ann Welland parking lot. So there's you know, 13 spaces against the, the fence. The east side used to be reserved for LSC when they were there at the bank center. And now um, it basically has a sign saying no parking anytime. It's been used by contractors uh, for different construction projects. But the working group's recommending that they become metered spaces so they become part of the, the downtown you know, metered space public parking at 50 cents an hour with a four hour limit and it would be you know, eight to uh, six grand. Um, so that's the first recommendation. So that's you know, something that the, the group endorsed and put to put forward. Um, the second one is, you know, there's five taxi spaces along South Pleasant Street um, adjacent to the North Common. And so, you know, at the first understanding was that some of the regulations say that these spaces are reserved only for taxi cabs um, that may be refined that they're only reserved for taxi cabs Thursday through Saturday from 11 to 2 uh, but you know nonetheless they'd like those signs to be removed and be clear that those spaces are metered spaces there are no taxi businesses in Amherst and there haven't been for a few years um, and the third one is adding a second 15 minute free space on the called the Boltwood lot or the Kellogg lot it's behind share coffee there's already an existing 15 minute free space on the east side of the parking lot adjacent to Ann Whalen. So next to that, there'd be another 15 minute free. And that's a, a highly sought after space. And it's, it's, it's well used. It's coincidentally, I went to Jen Reynolds, an apartment enforcement officer today, right in that area, and I asked her. And she said, it's really well respected. People typically just use it for 15 minutes. And she said, it is really busy. So um, you know, she, she could see that another one would be used respectfully. So those are the three recommendations at this time. And as we know, that to move forward, there need to be a public hearing on some of these. Well, I did notice that my name was next to this item, but I was happy to defer to Mr. Malloy. Yeah. Did you want to offer uh, any additional? Well, work? actually, I think it's a good summary. Um, the downtown parking working group, and there's six of us out of the seven slots. There's no vacancy for a while. Um, these were all things that we felt pretty solid on. We, you know, we discussed them a bunch, but we weren't, they weren't uh, debated the way some of our other issues that have, have not resolved yet. So I guess we saw these as easy ones. I just wanted to add for the, the 13 parking spaces that are up against the chain link fence after the Ann Whalen lot, um, it's being used by some of the construction um, crews for the new Santee Health Center, Bank Center renovations, but that is drawing to a conclusion and it's pretty 
close to a good part of the downtown and seemed like it would be appropriate to meet her for access to the bank center, to the health center, and to other um, venues in that general area. And right now, it has a sign that says you can't park there at all, even though after hours it's empty. Um, and after you know, four or five in the, in the evening. So that was one um, I've been particularly interested in addressing. Um, the other ones are maybe second, second and third order of business, but um, we wanted to get this to the select board so that we could proceed along and if we could make those changes um, for the 13 parking spaces, I think that would help alleviate some of the supply issues in that part of downtown. Mr. Sutter? So I have one question regarding the uh, taxi spots that are described on Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that there had been discussion at one point about um, Uber drivers doing things that were not uh, in the best interest of uh, anybody, including using the fire station driveway uh, as a spot to stop until they got a call. Are um, the Uber or um, Lyft drivers using the taxi spots for those purposes, or are they really vacant? Do we know? I've heard that they're not using them just because they're you know that half a block away or across the intersection. So, um, you know, I know some you know places in Boston you know has reserved spaces for you know for ride sharing pickup, but um, you know it seems like they're not using them now. So, even though they're available. To add to that, we did talk about it a couple different times, and um, we have um, a recommendation in um, that I believe has been now funded for a parking consultant to help us improve the parking management system. And one of the things that is on our laundry list of tasks for that person is to figure out the best way to handle ride sharing. The information we had at this point was they want to go to the pickup place where the person has called them from and not queue in those taxi spots. Um, so we looked at that. It didn't seem to be the right solution for right now. But we know over time ride sharing is growing and growing. And so we want to look at that. But we didn't have enough information, uh, expertise to really jump into that issue. So do you agree, Mr. Malloy? No, I agree, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a kind of evolving field, you know, how they use ride sharing and what, what they do. So, you know, we, you know, we, the other members have said that you know, they really don't want to. It's just too far the way they the way they work is not. They wouldn't use those spaces. But. So there, yes, Ms. Moore. What's our belief on these three issues as to which or all are subject to an actual hearing, if we decide that we are interested in holding such a hearing? Yeah. Because, I mean, in theory, anything we do to change parking is. Reading the bylaws, it seems like all of these would be changing, whether it's a time limit or mm -hmm. something, so they would all be subject to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So my follow-up mm -hmm. question then, be, being that that's what I believed as well, mm -hmm. is what's the next step being proposed by downtown parking working group or staff in terms of what would be appropriate timing for this, given town meeting, the summer, all that good stuff. Well, there needs to be two weeks uh, notif right. notification in the newspaper. The downtown parking working group had a meeting today. We weren't sure if there's going to be something coming out of that or not. So we could do it in June. So my question is not just when we can do it, although I appreciate the reminder of the two weeks notice that's here in the copy of my lot. I appreciate us having it in the back. I'm asking when's a good time to do this, given when it's a good time of year to change signage, when it's a good time to expect people to show up, et cetera, and given our schedule. So we could do it as soon as, because two weeks notice, because there isn't something new. That's, I believe you just indicated, coming out of downtown parking working mm -hmm. group today that would also be subject to a hearing. Mm -hmm. So what I'm asking is, I'm not saying there's one answer. I'm asking, given all the things that we juggle and given the agenda setting things you just looked at, I believe, yesterday. Yeah. Um, when this seems like it might be a good time to put in. 
could. I, I would say, and, and to be honest, the downtown parking working group did not discuss the hearing date issue. Um, different members, you know, are, are here or away. The, the ones who are here would come. I would say as soon as possible, um, because not only is there the notice period for the advertising, but there's a I think is it four to six weeks for getting meters. Right. So, if we're looking to have this happen during the slower time in preparation, you know, par parking already has eased up and will continue to ease up over the summer. So, doing signs, doing meters, changes is coming up, um, so we'd want to kind of get it underway. Um, clearly, the later we go into the summer, the harder it is to have people come to a hearing. And I, I imagine the business community has some interest, although these were not the ones that drew the crowd. The one that remains unresolved is where more interest lies, and we're not ready to make a recommendation on that. <coughs> So as far as our own schedule, I think when we get into June, I think I think June's a nice month to do this. Because <laughs> <Not a nice, laughs> I think once we get into July, we get into people's vacations right. and we get into an evaluation process and that sort of thing. Yep. So it, it might be best to, to move ahead sooner rather than later. And you know, I don't know if anyone wants to make any specific motion suggestions, but so as as the as the at the agenda setting last night, we, there are a number of parking related issues that are gonna come up in June depending on how long town meeting goes, like Olympia Place, Fisher Street, um, the number, there are a number of sort of that same genre of things that we could package this all into. So parking night, hmm. the select board. I will second what Connie said, you know, this has been on the agenda a few times and other business and property owners from the downtown have been there and they have not really brought up an opinion on these. I mean, they seem fine with it, they didn't, you know, no one, they all agree that the 13 spaces, you know, wouldn't be a detriment and, they like the 15 minute free, so there wasn't any really any, any negative. What's the plan with Olympia Place and Fisher? And that Fisher, we were hoping to have a follow up since we said it would expire June 1st. Um, and obviously, we haven't had a chance to do that yet. But is that also a hearing? I mean, we can talk about the packages and things. I'm just trying to understand which things are subject to hearing and which things aren't. I mean, if we want to change something, then I would think it would be subject to hearing as opposed to, I think at one point we assumed we just hear an update on what happened at Fisher. <coughs> and then we would later have a hearing if we needed to do something about Fisher. Right. I mean, so when they talk about an agenda setting, they said, let's do this in June. Let's get through town meeting. Fisher Street and this place, some of these things might have more people who want to attend. Let's not try to squeeze it in right before town meeting. So once town meeting, and that's why choosing a June date would be fine. That would give us first meeting June is the fourth, mm -hmm. assuming town meeting finishes in May. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think some of it's driven by notification of. 14 days and can we put the pieces together. Um, we've not heard anything that would suggest change at Fisher Street or, or won't be a place we just would be getting an update on you and get an update from where they are. Okay. Um, I don't know if we need a motion per se to no. schedule it, but um, I think it would be, you know, as soon as we can relative to the appropriate notice to the public, but the idea being we put all of those parking related things, both hearing related and non hearing related, together on one night so that they'll all be together. Yes. Thank you. That's helpful. It's just trying to understand if we, I guess it might make the most sense to advertise Olympia Place and Fisher as hearings just from the standpoint of giving ourselves maximum flexibility if we decide to do something different associated with. Them. Um, particularly with Olympia Place with the meter, and that, you know, that was much that was more concrete. Right. Fisher was more a matter of employment of resources, deployment of resources, um, as to whether or not that would work. And obviously, we're not going to cut them off on June first if we don't have the hearing until the first or the eleventh, because that's just not how we do things. Right. Um, along those lines, would that also be the night that we could then discuss whether or not we are planning to continue the charge of the downtown parking working group, which is currently set to expire at the end of June? We could probably Rather than do talking that. about it in, you know, August. <laughs> right. right. <coughs> well, our, 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 
Yes. Unless they're under the holdover rules. Um, they're not because they have a time limited but, charge. Well, but the other, chart, but they have the charge says. Okay. That I mean, I don't mind just talking about it. Just yeah. I hear what you're saying. Which which yeah. thing? The charge says they're done. So I think yeah, given the you know the idea of a maximum flexibility, we can certainly notice at the public hearing sort of all those topics, um, which might get more inter people interested if they're worried it's going to change in some way. <laughs> <laughs> but but nonetheless, I think that's all right. Um, is there anything else on on the <coughs> working group recommendations? I mean, I think the idea was to preview it with this group to see if there were any particular concerns that need to be answered before we got into a more public, you know, hearing kind of situation. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that was my assumption that, that we wouldn't go ahead and no. advertise hearings without it having been it's invited almost like a first select board first. first. Right. right. Looked already, but so um, that's really helpful. And then, yeah, if we could just add to the list a bit. A, at least a discussion, if not a decision, on the continuation of downtown parking working group, or if it's being brought into TAC. Or, you know, we had theories a while back as to how it was going to work. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what we think. Well, it's now good because then they can come, if members are in town, then they can come for both mm -hmm. of those discussions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maximize all parking all the time. So, uh, Mr. Chair, if I might, I, yes. I wasn't, I was sort of listening, but June 11th or 25th of the two you're looking at, or you're also looking at the June 4th, right? For it somehow seems soon. Yeah, June 4th seems quick to get a notice ready. That yeah. might be the quickest, I mean, that's the earliest in June yeah. is all. So I doubt I, that it's that, that yeah. quick. So I'm um, kind of highlighting the 11th through the 25th as the more likely, but maybe I'm wrong. You have to move really fast to get yeah. into the Gazette in time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd know better than any of us would in terms of... And now we've added other categories, so... Yeah, I can... I think that if we think the fourth is going to be too quick for official notice and stuff, then the next logical is the 11th, so... Mm -hmm. We'll make a note okay. of that. Um, okay, great. So I think we can move on to our next item of business, which is the authorized <coughs> stop sign at intersection of Carrier Lane and Bay Road. Um, and we have a memo from Mr. Steeles in our packet and a checklist. And I think we even got tonight, we may have even gotten a map. Yeah. On the desk. Yeah, on our desk tonight, we got a map that we're drawing on. Checklist. No, introduce something that's been noted by the neighbors and there's some conversation. There's no, uh, in order to install this, you know, the select board needs to vote it. Uh, there's no hearing requirement. And it meets all the mm -hmm. criteria as determined by the town engineer. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions about the stop sign? Ms. Brewer? I was just going to say that it was incredibly helpful to have the checklist information. We haven't always been provided that in the past, mm -hmm. and it's very informative and lets us understand better how those decisions are made. And obviously, I'm sure that they intended to put the map in our packet originally, because then we wouldn't have all had to look it up to remind ourselves where that was. But um, <clears throat> all right. if there's not sort of further questions or comments, I would entertain a motion. If someone would like to make it? Our revised motion sheet. I move. Okay, okay. go ahead. Go ahead, Andrew. I move to approve the installation of the stop sign and stop bar on Canterbury Lane, where it intersects with Bay Road and Southeast Street. Second. And there's a second. They have a license for the stop bar. Is that a new liquor license? <laughs> <laughs> Is there further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> that is none. So that's unanimous. Thank you. Appreciate that. So next on our agenda is uh, review and take positions on April 30th annual town meeting articles. I think we do have a couple left. Um, 25, which is free cash, 27, uh, and 34. We, I think with 34, we, we took a position, but I think um, 
there are some additional options that we may not have formally sort of thought, you know, mm -hmm. articulated in our in our, mm -hmm. our actions. So we may want to uh, augment what we did relative to that particular article. Um, so I'm open to starting with any one of those three. If well, there's one other, and that is. Um, uh, we're going to have a formal position in response to any motion to reconsider uh, a budget that might arise. Right. <clears throat> uh, Start with the easy ones. Right. <laughs> Perhaps that would be best. Um, so it, I'm noting on our motion sheet that the Article 25, which is free cash, doesn't specify mm -hmm. an amount, which mm -hmm. as of this moment is 75000 75, um, which, you know, in, in general, um, that article is necessary to balance our budgets, which is required to uh, you know, set our tax rate and mm -hmm. certify our, our general position with the state. So we may want to take our our motion on that one first. I think that's the easiest one of the bunch. If anyone wants to offer a motion relative to Article 25. I have a question. Sure. So there's going to be an amount. There's already an amount. Right. Um, some years there is no amount. Right. Um, and the amount's just going to be what the Finance Committee tells us is the right amount. <laughs> right. So we Unless already, we disagree with them for some reason. Right. I mean, we dismissed Article 26, which would be the other way to balance the budget, right. which is stabilization. Mm -hmm. So this is really our only opportunity, yes. and, mm -hmm. and so we have to come into balance. So it, I think usually, you know, if there's no need for free cash to balance the budget, then we dismiss it, and otherwise we, have, we are almost compelled to recommend it. But, hmm. but we do know right now. We already need money because of the money that's already that's been added. That's so unless that gets reconsidered as well, um, right. at this point we know that there's additional money that's going to need to come out of free cash as opposed to the years when there's no need and it gets dismissed like 26 does. Right. right. Well, th my question would be, when we talked about the, uh, if, a, if there's a motion to reconsider and it adds more money to, um, the, to the budget that also needs to come out of free cash, then we have a moving target. Right. So if we vote an amount of seventy-five thousand, which is now known, but if something else happens, or so how do we deal with that? What I was trying to say is, whatever amount the finance committee tells us is the right amount. So we could, unless we had a reason to disagree with the finance committee, which seems hard for me to imagine. Oh, or it's so a saying a motion like that. that said that right an amount exactly because it's so does that make target. sense? Yeah. So I mean, that's that's what. Other councils, they recommend the advice of the finance committee, but I was told that we don't do that here. Um, so whatever. We, we don't. But we, we don't do usually have moving targets. Maybe like we do now. Yeah. <laughs> we can set a precedent for future town meetings. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, it makes sense. <coughs> right, Ms. Sorry, Ms. I mean, if you really want, you want to get anal about this, you could say $75,000 or such amount as the finance committee may recommend. You know, you could put ah, both okay. options in there. All right. That puts a moment in time <coughs> as to where we are right now. Right. Okay. <laughs> So was was that a I like that. was that a motion? To I mean, or it, it's a, or is it a proposed amendment to the motion, right, or whatever? No, it's not. Well, it's it hasn't been moved yet, so I don't know. What is Miss Kerr? I believe is going to ask me now. No, I, no, that, no, that makes sense. Either seventy-five thousand dollars or the amount recommended by the finance yeah. committee. Yeah. yeah. So that's a motion. I already circled recommend, so clearly yeah. <laughs> we're good. Nobody did. I did. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Got that one, yeah. That's unanimous. Getting more like other towns all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we have, um, so Article 27, we haven't taken any position on at this point. Um, there have been a bit of a question relative to uh, a line in the, actually in the original proposed article. Um, and uh, could you want to report on what we heard from town council relative to that or? Yeah, there, there was a question that came up about, because this transfer 
um, for the per from the school uh, transfer for the purpose of affordable housing to the select board and then transfer to the uh, for municipal affordable housing trust for the purposes of affordable housing. That means the property can only be used for affordable housing unless a future legislative body says it can be used for something else. So, um, and a future legislative body would have to say say that anyway. You think, according to town council? And that would be a two-thirds vote of that body. Yes. So it it doesn't forever bind them in a way that prevents action, it just requires them to take an extra step that would hopefully be clear if they were at that point. Um, so I would entertain a motion on this article that we have that clarity and and um, again, it, the motion that's going to be made is, is going to be revised from the article that was in the war. But I, I, mean, um, I, I move to recommend to the April 30th, 2018 annual town meeting, Article 27, Transfer and Authorization, East Street School, to the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. And so I can speak to that. Yeah, and Mr. Smart to speak. speak. So, was that a second? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Mr. Wall. All right, is there further discussion on that? Uh, the one thing I would, in discussing the <coughs> transition and, and articles that are potentially under the guise of, of not being sort of consistent with that or not. I debated about, you know, should I present that broad topic under Article 27 or should I wait till later? Because um, I think I, I took 27 and 33 so that that topic could be broached in sort of how we got to our positions. Um, and so, you know, if, if it was a preference to do it 27 or a preference to do it later, as far as, you know, talking about how we go about it. Well, right. wouldn't each one have maybe its own statement, although it's kind of related, like I was thinking something general for 27, like we did um, the um, guidance from town attorneys keep the law was that we could act on this but we did have extensive discussion of our own about right. that and did find it appropriate and then whatever you were you know uh, just so that yes. it's been very brief not diving right. in. that was kind of the direction I was leaning yeah in. yeah I don't know if, Mr. Wolf? We, we, we were saying as I I took it that the first article that comes up is the best chance to I mean we haven't had a chance really to talk mm -hmm. about the charter yet and actually right. right. so right, right. Just okay. start to frame it a little <coughs> okay so is there further discussion on Article 27? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? So that's unanimous. Um, relative to Article 34, I think what we, and I know it's not out at the moment, but. Since I was bothering you about it, Mr. Slaughter, I can. Please. Speak. So the, um, what we had done at the time, way so many weeks ago, when we thought we were actually going to get to decide what articles <laughs> town meeting was going to have, ha-ha uh, <laughs> on us, so we, were. Um, <clears throat> we had at that time come up with some language on both Article 33 and 34 that said, the select board finds that, the, that Article 34 of the April 30 town meeting is not consistent with, blah, 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 blah. I wrote dot, 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 and recommend referral to planning board. And that made sense, but then later as we realized things were playing out differently and um, we had multiple positions on some things, and of course on Article 34, the planning board has multiple positions. It says recommends referral to the planning board because they're willing to take it up. If refer fails, does not recommend. And I guess my question would be if we have, if we have a strong feeling one way or the other because our other option is to, other than not recommend, is also to recommend dismissal or to move dismissal. So we have multiple choices. But the planning board does go f before we do associated with this. And it does not look, what they would do is they, it looks like they would recommend referral, but they're not going to move referral. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one of those where we're all trying to feel it out as we go along. So often we just recommend things. We don't make the motion, but sometimes we do make the motion itself. I think when we discussed this, we did, if memory serves, 
So you guys can. <laughs> we talked it is about subject that to debate. I think we, we talked about whether we would actually make the motion to refer, which I think we said we would if that was the case. Now, if that goes down, do we want to make the motion to dismiss if it's not made by the planning board? Right. That is the question. So that would be approved. So my feeling is yes and yes. Okay. Yes, we should um, make the motion to refer so that that's clearly there to be moved and, and voted on. And then I think should that motion to refer fail, then I would like us to move to dismiss. Okay. So would you like or to craft we, that into a yeah, motion? Do we move to dismiss or do we recommend dismissal? I'm just, well, once, so mm. if, I mean, it all depends on how things play out, right? So right. assuming oh. the petitioner says they want to do it, they make the motion in terms of except they're going to change their motion. And then they're going to speak to their motion. And then the planning board's going to say, and refer it to us. But they're not going to say, I recommend, I move no, to refer. They're going to say, we recommend referral to us. And then Mr. Slaughter will then say, I move to refer to the planning board. And then we'll fight about that for a while. I'm sorry, argue. Um, fight, whatever. Debate. Debate. I'm sure that's the word I was Discuss looking for. <laughs> yes, very <laughs> civilly. And then if that fails, I don't know that the moderator will necessarily look to us again unless we ask him to or if he'll be willing to look to us for a second motion at that point, if that's kind of our initial shot and then it's open to everybody after that. So if referral, if referral fails, then he'd say, well, we're back on the petitioner's motion. And then the next person to raise their hand that moves to dismiss, then that could happen. But I'm not sure if he'll let us do it or if we'll just... It's awkward. Right. Well, he's been pretty um, willing to recognize select board hands, so he might not be the first one called after he opens it up for discussion. But we would be likely to be called soon into the discussion, and then we can make that other motion. Is that possible? Do you have a solution? So, so I think the, the intent of the select board is clear. We can check with the moderator to see. You know, we know mm -hmm. your sequence of actions. You'd like to make two motions. Mm -hmm. He would recognize you to do that. Right. Um, so when you when he sees you raise your hand, he knows it's going to be for a motion. Yeah. Right. Following. That's, yeah. So the heads up. On there's it, no yeah. surprises for him. Mm -hmm. So speaking of motions, do we want to take a motion to articulate that point of view? <laughs> I want to give it a shot. Here. Well, the third question is that if. Both of those motions are made and fail, right. and then we're stating a position. Do we have a position? Is that going to be a separate motion? Or? And our third position <coughs> is if you, if town meeting chooses to not refer and not dismiss, that we do not recommend this article. Not recommend. So that's our third. So can we get all that into our motion? <laughs> do you want to give it a I'll shot? Bet, I'll bet the town manager can put yeah. that into Okay, motion. what do you guys? Um, to recommend to the April 3rd. 2018 annual town meeting article 34 petition zoning bylaw and the zone official zoning map to first recommend to move to refer to the planning board if that fails to move to dismiss the article if that fails then to not recommend the article mm -hmm. so moved second and there's a second all right am i assigned to this one or is yes you are I believe i am okay <laughs> surprise all right. Uh, is there further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So that's your yeah. so, Mr. Slaughter, when, yes. you, when you get to working on this, I'd be happy to you know, help our ideas. Well, we, yes, I will probably ask you. you the, the please give me at least 24 hours. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So I think then the, the, the fourth thing relative to uh, logistics and, and uh, sorry, review and take positions on the meeting uh, have to do with a, a motion to potentially reconsider part of the budget. Um, do you want to introduce? Sure. So, so the moderator wrote to the select board informing him of the notion that someone might move to um, reconsider Article 8. Um, and he had a sort of scenario um, if, if, if motion to reconsider passes. And he has a scenario that he would like, he would seek to move this to the next town meeting, uh, whether that's Thursday or Monday, depend, depending on what you, that might be something you want to talk about tonight as well, whether you want to recommend at the 
the conclusion of this town meeting, if you want to meet Thursday or Monday. Um, and then to put it in, and he would also seek to move the free cash article uh, to Monday, to Thursday and Monday as well. Um, so. Ms. Brewer. So, the thing that I didn't understand about the email is that it seems like it makes sense for the moderator to try and lay out all these options, and then it seems like it should be up to the school committee if they wanted to do it tonight or next Monday night. And if they didn't have a preference, then I think we should state our preference. But I think we would normally support their preference. I'm not particularly interested in the moderator's preference. I'm looking to the school committee's preference. So do we know what the school committee's preference is? Did he find that out? In terms of the scheduling, I think Mr. Demling has been in contact with the moderator. I don't know what their discussion has led to. I think Mr. Demling has been talking about if it is considered for reconsideration, he wanted to amend the motion. I am not privy to that conversation between them. Whose decision is it? Well, technically, is it the moderator's decision? Yeah. Somebody has made a motion. So I would suspect that the moderator will strongly encourage the person making the motion to reconsider have at a date certain be their motion. Whether or not the petitioner, so to speak, takes that advice, that doesn't mean that they can't make the motion without that. But I mean, like I said, I really appreciate you laid out all the options, but I don't understand why we would push it off unless we had been told that the superintendent can't be there, nobody from the school committee can be there. It would be crazy to have nobody there. I don't think there's any more likelihood anybody's going to be there on Monday than tonight, or Thursday for that matter, um, at this point. So I'm uncomfortable with pushing the operating budget out yet further again when we thought we were done with it. My two cents, my understanding is people are on, on uh, are, are noticed that this very likely could happen tonight and have made efforts to be here. Yes, less convinced, not less sure about that for Monday, and I would think unless the school committee stated that preference, that I, I would recommend a statement. We would like it to come tonight unless the school committee feels otherwise. I don't know if we have any way in in this though. You can state. I I, I, I feel that strongly that theory. tonight is better unless, as you said, the school committee feels otherwise. Well, because following up on that, the the person who advised the moderator they intend to make the motion did not tell the select board they intend to make the motion, did not take advantage of the publicly available Google group to explain to town meeting that they were taking the motion, did not write to all the town meeting members in various precincts to tell them they were planning to make the motion. So given that there's been no coordinated effort from that end, the fact that people are in fact making a point of trying to be here tonight in case this happens, mm -hmm. in the absence of the school committee, just as Ms. Kruger said, People are doing the best they can in the utter absence of information from the person making the motion. And so, given that, it seems incredibly unfair to suggest people come tonight because normally when you make a motion to reconsider it, it's for the same night. And then say, oh, but actually, just kidding, we'll actually do it next Monday. That, that doesn't seem like a... That hasn't been something town meetings had any opportunity to consider, just like they haven't been able to consider the merits of the proposal because no one's brought it forward. Right. So the motion to reconsider, if I'm understanding correctly, and I'm just making sure I'm, just the motion to reconsider, if that passes, then the actual reconsideration itself is what would be scheduled to a, a later date, certainly. Do you think that would be a separate motion? Okay. I think that's what the moderator is saying. what he's that, saying, oh, is that so if we'll, it passes, we'll, then. We'll take up the topic of reconsideration, potentially tonight if it's May, and we'll vote that. Once that's voted, then we're back, you know, as he often says, to the exact place we were before that was voted, and then I presume that can be procedurally scheduled to a date certain. I don't but want it scheduled for another date than tonight unless the school committee says that. I mean, right. If right. we have any way in, it should be, we, yes, we vote to reconsider and then we take it up, but we take it up tonight unless the school committee doesn't want to. So, given that, in fact, we are going to talk about coming to a position on a proposal we've seen no details about as to whether or not we would support reconsideration, which I think in the absence of any information to tell us why we would support it, we would not support it. Mm -hmm. 
And inevitably, when people talk about reconsideration, if someone brings up the idea of it not being reconsidered tonight, that will play into the decision as to whether or not to reconsider it because that has come up on the very few occasions we've ever done reconsiderations prior to this session of town meeting, which were that are the people here that need to be here. And so then people would say, no, that's a reason for them to vote against reconsideration because those people aren't here. Right. And so it, it kind of all mixes together, even though it's really only the question about the reconsideration, it's also about why the reconsideration and why or why not we should do it. And I think that we should make the statement, given that that will happen, um, I think we should make the statement along the lines of what Ms. Kruger indicated, that people made the effort to be here tonight, believing that there was going to be such a motion. And so if it passes, which the select board, in my opinion, does not recommend, that, that the motion to reconsider passes, it should not be rescheduled for another time. It should be done tonight in the order that the moderator suggested. Can you make that into a motion? Sure, I'd say that's a motion. <laughs> the select board does not support, does not recommend reconsideration of any part of the operating budget ever again. Um, and, and if reconsideration that passes, is passed by town meeting, then recommends that we proceed with the reconsideration tonight as the order, given the other order of items that have been scheduled. Unless the, uh, Unless school, the com school committee, committee requests otherwise. a different date. I might, could we say we don't support reconsideration of the school budget because we're tying this to the school committee? Oh, I guess we should say that rather than that any time any ever. Yes, that probably would be more proper. I thought that was just adding the numbers. Yes, I was just trying to be clever. You're that, exactly right. Seconded? No, it is. Okay. Okay. And it's been seconded. <coughs> is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. I think we wonder have, why we have to meet before town meeting every single year. Yeah. So we have one other piece of business, I mm -hmm. believe, yep. um, which is the charter transition. Um, actually, we have one, one thing that we need to settle on that last one, and that is we need to be clear as to who's speaking to it and what they're going to say uh, perfectly. Happy to not be the person, but uh, <laughs> I want to be clear so that the person can be prepared. It might not be you either. It's and it budget. really. Could, oh, I guess it could, shouldn't should be. Should not be me. I could do, do it. it. Sure. Miss Brewer, I like that idea. <laughs> I'm so popular right now, anyway. Yes, <laughs> let's go on. Uh huh. Okay. So, good point, Mr. Steinberg. Yeah, I mean, I have thought about it, and, and I don't mind saying my thoughts and real quickly and then we should go on to the other thing is um, we understand that the maker of the motion may state the reasons for uh, what would be done with an amended motion that's fairly common to do that and it may have to and, and it would appear it has to do with uh, child care and uh, in not recommending uh, there, there are obvious points that child care is not a function of the school committee, uh, that a pre-K program is not, a, not the same as child care, and that a pre-K program needs to be developed carefully by the uh, school committee and presented to us with a responsible um, education plan and budget, which they have not had the opportunity to do that there are significant capital costs that could probably be involved in any such plan and it's further complicated by the fact that two buildings that might be considered are um, owned by the region and not by the town uh, and uh, just the it, it's uh, those are the kinds of things that i think would be additional points to us i have a question on that we've talked it's been said different ways the south campus actually owned by the town or by the region are we renting it to the region, or do, do they own it? Do we transfer it to them? We don't have any records of it anyway. So um, <laughs> we're scheduled to go to the school committee to have them supposed to transfer the school in case they the, transfer the building to the town in case they happen to own it. 
Right. <laughs> but we looked through the record. I sort of remember this that conversation that from that before. Um, and so it's not, that's not actually owned by the region, so if they're thinking of putting it there. Yep. I'm worried about time. Okay. We have one more thing. So we have one really other topic, uh, which is under charter transition. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you know, the charter language you, you mentioned the day after town meeting, the special town meeting dissolved, you voted to forward the legislation approved by town meeting uh, and authorized within the charter to the legislature. Ms. Brewer personally was sent to them electronically and she hands it a hard copy with the raised seal to the, to the House Clerk's Office on May 4th, Friday. Uh, that legislation, we've been told they have all the paperwork they need from the town to move forward on this legislation. Uh, the, our state representative has uh, monitored this and it is now in the House, in the Joint Committee on Election Law. Uh, and that's where it, uh, it, a public hearing has not been scheduled yet. Uh, but they will be scheduling a public hearing. Staff there and the leadership there are aware of the time sensitivity of this legislation, and that's where it stands. So um, at the agenda setting meeting, we thought that there would be reason for the select board to restate its commitment to um, have this implemented as soon as possible and recommit to our position, stating clearly the reasons why. In your packet tonight is a motion that I uh, wrote today, and I regret that it's coming up as late as I am because it's about 15 lines long. Um, but it uh, would, it does exactly that, um, is to renew its request to the legislature and state the reasons therefore and uh, so I uh, can we just read the motion and we can discuss it I can do that yeah. uh, and I can make it as a motion that if nobody seconds it then so be it I move that the select board renew its request that the legislature enact the requested legislation to include a preliminary election for town council on the date of the state primary election for the following reasons. One, this provision was adopted by the Amherst Charter Commission after a thorough process that included publication of a draft and hearings during which no comment was offered regarding the proposed date of the, I can change that to preliminary election. Two, the charter was approved by Amherst voters on March 27 by a vote of 3,502 in favor, 2,492 against. Three, at a special town meeting held on April 30, the town voted 127 to 72 to make this request to the legislature after rejecting an amendment to change the date of the preliminary election. Again, not the change. Um, four college students who testified before the select board and spoke at the town meeting supported the uh, preliminary election date to coincide with the state primary because it would increase student vote in the council election. Five holding the election another date would reduce participation of all Amherst voters in the council election and six rejecting the September 4 uh, primary in, September, in November 6, uh, again, preliminary election in November 6, general election dates in Amherst on constitutional grounds would be by the same, would by the same logic jeopardize those election dates for the rest of the Commonwealth. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. So for the discussion on this motion. So two things. Should we send along, since when we sent the original uh, request, normally you just hand them the legislation and they have the certified copy of the vote. But should we send along the KP law information that we all had to show what town meeting had so everybody knows what everybody had because they might be curious about how we came to these conclusions as well as this being a very strong statement so we could send this as a cover, so to speak, associated with the KP law opinions on that. 
And the other question I had is, is it worth working in, given how long this already is, but is it worth working in somehow where it talks about the publication of the draft and there's technically one hearing associated with that, but more my concern is what I'm trying to work in is the fact that the people on the election committee may not be aware that the AGO also is and is required to review the draft and send it back to us. And of the charter itself. Yes. And that's not mentioned here. I mean they may not be particularly familiar with, you know, unless their towns change their towns change forms of government. They may not be aware of that notice. So I wonder if we can work that into the first provision where it talks about um, the publication of a draft that was also reviewed by the AGO and required hearing because some people think of hearings as just meetings and a required uh, hearing. Something along those lines, I would be fine with that being adapted later. What we could do, to just be simple because we're running out of time, is um, add a seventh point but make number two and then renumber after that. And number two being the charter was re reviewed by the Attorney General's office. As right, requ right. yeah. right. required. As required. Two things. One, in the languages, I mean, this is a pretty extensive motion here. But the last one, number six, where you talk about um, on constitutional grounds would, by the same logic, jeopardize the election. So it seems a little strange that we're weighing in on a constitutional issue. I would at least want to say could, by the same logic, not would. Because getting into that legal debate, We've already seen much debate about the constitutionality, and I don't mind having an opinion, but rather than would, I might suggest could. And my other thing I just want to state is, I think um, whatever actions we can take as a select board and as our staff to move this forward and keep it moving, I see this as one of the most important tasks we have in the transition is to have this acted on. So whether it's calling on the more experienced members of the larger delegation who offered to help us to help move this forward, um, staff of um, Senator Rosenberg to help us in addition to our state representative. But I, I just think, um, I know it's up to that, that the a Joint Committee on Election Law, but any, um, help that we can get. I, I think this is the most important thing that we have to do. I'm a little frustrated we got to it at 7 o'clock, but um, how to really emphasize how important this is and the timeliness of this is so important to what we're trying to do. So, shall I, those changes to the language will take as friendly amendments, is that all right? Yes, yeah. and yeah. including the word could instead of would in that last. Did you want to put the date of the publication of the draft? This, yeah, September. Yeah. Well, actually, that was a draft, and then the important thing is, is that it was published. The mailing, or the, the mailing went until December. Right. It was published in September. <clears throat> okay. Of 07, of, of 2007. So what's the date? Yeah. No, because it's been available ten right. months since 20. Right. But whatever the, the date was. But the mailing was legally required to. So that's what. And then familiar. mail and go ahead and add mailed. Mailed, okay. mailed to as required right. to all, all to resident. How is it? residents voters. of all registered voters? Yeah, just all residents. Yeah, all registered voters. Not residents, but not all residents, but residents of all. Right. One to each residence right. Right. of a registered right. any registered voter in December 2017. Yeah, I think that's actually important to include. Thank you for thinking of that. I think that is valuable. To mention that I know it's gotten long, so maybe set, maybe break it up into a paragraph or something. But okay. Okay. we'll add the date the relevant. Well, shows the people uh, that this is a long time. Yeah, we have to get our further mind. discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. For That's unanimous. And now we're going to recess. Thank you all.